Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artist Empire here, and in today's fun video, we're going to be unboxing, testing, and reviewing a brand new laser engraver from the MacPow Laser Company. They have kindly sent me their brand new 22 watt diode laser engraver, and to the date of this video's posting, it is the most powerful laser that I have unboxed and tested. So I'm really excited to do that and see what all it is capable of. But with laser engravers, please keep in mind they are never ever going to replace the scroll saw woodworking that I am known for, my friends. Scroll saw woodworking is what I am commonly known for, and I'm still passionate about making creative projects on that amazing tool. But I have found a place for the laser engravers out in the workshop, and I think they are also very versatile tools, just like a scroll saw. Now, the laser is in the box behind me. After a quick research, I found out that the laser is practically fully assembled within the box only thing you really need to do is add the feet to it and then the laser module itself and then connect it to light burn you guys know that i love to use the light burn software with laser engravers here is the box behind me it arrived on the doorstep yesterday and you can see that it has got some size to it it's also got a little bit of weight to it so really cool there you see the company logo there on the side and the best possible way that i can give you guys the best view of the unboxing process is i'm going to have to move the camera and set up a card table in the middle of the workshop to hopefully give you guys the best view possible of what's all in this big box here. So let's move the camera and do that now. And bringing the box over to the table, we will cut the tape and remove all the parts and pieces, being careful to keep up with everything but you can see how everything is carefully packaged to where it will not bounce around and be damaged during the shipping process. But as you can see, the laser is pretty much fully assembled and all that I am gonna have to do is attach the Wi-Fi antenna, which I will do now. And then I will turn the laser over and we will put on the four feet. And there's also four additional risers packaged in but then we will flip it back over, install the actual laser head, and connect the air assist, and the assembly was fully complete. And I'll switch back over to real time now to talk about the laser before we do some tests. All right, my friends, here is the fully assembled MacPow 22 watt diode laser engraver, and it is a beast of a machine. It is very rock solid. Again, right out of the box, it was basically fully assembled. Only thing I had to do was add the four feet here, and they simply just screw in. And also included in the box is four additional riser feet if you needed a little bit extra height if you wanted to engrave on the top of like a box or crate or something like that and just needed that extra height for the laser. And then we hooked up the laser head here to the gantry and we hooked up the air assist and the wire. It is ready to go. And we also connected the air assist itself and Wi-Fi antenna. And I really love this kit because it comes with the included air assist. A lot of lasers that you get do not have that. I followed the instructions carefully and we are now ready to power it on for the first time. And always keep in mind, if your laser is not in an enclosure, always have a well ventilated area to where you can run it. The shop door is open. The fans are going to be going while I am testing this laser engraver and always wear your safety glasses while the laser is in use. But we will now power it up. And you can hear it's not very loud. And we will send it to the home location, which is this front corner here. And now the laser is ready to create projects. What I'm going to do is connect the laser to the light burn software on my laptop and put a honeycomb spool board in the middle. We will add some material and after dialing in our settings, we will begin testing to see what this laser is capable of. And after connecting the laser to light burn, I loaded a piece of quarter inch material into the laser and we were ready to begin our very first test. And this is a laser test file I designed in the Lightburn software to test the laser's engraving and cutting capabilities. And obviously the footage is sped up here. It's sped up for all the projects I show you in today's review, but I'll show you everything in depth that we make today when we close the video at the end. 
And another thing to note is the laser needs to be in a proper enclosure because of the smoke and fumes it puts off. But for today's video, I felt this was the best possible way to give you guys the best possible view of the laser while it was working. But after the test file was done and I was happy with it and the settings I used, I was ready to do my very first project on the laser. And this is going to be a cell phone stand made out of the same quarter inch material. And what it is doing now is engraving my Artisan Pirate logo onto the back of the phone stand. And it takes around 15 minutes to make a phone stand. And the vast majority of that time is going to be in the engraving of your design. And these are totally customizable to where you can put any quote, photo, or business logo on the back where the cell phone rests. But after it engraves everything, it will proceed to laser cutting. And one thing I love about this new laser is it has automatic air assist that will kick on during the laser cutting process. So that's a really cool feature to have. You can see my logo taking shape there. But now it will quickly laser cut the actual phone stand itself. And with each laser you use, you will have to play around with the settings to find out what settings work best for your machine depending on its power and wattage. But now we are doing a slate drink coaster. These are always very popular. People usually sell these in batches of four. And I'm once again engraving my Artisan Pirate logo onto it. And it takes about eight minutes to make a slate drink coaster. Depending on how many details are in the graphic you are engraving. And this laser also has Wi-Fi capabilities to where you can run it from your cell phone through an app. I did not test that feature on today's video because I am very familiar with the Lightburn software and that's what I like to use when it comes to the laser engravers. But once again you can see my logo taking shape. And this laser will ultimately end up in a laser enclosure to protect from all the smoke and fumes. But during all of the projects here, I had on the safety goggles and the shop was well ventilated. And for something neat and different, I broke down the actual box the laser was shipped in and loaded a piece of it into the laser bed. So this is cardboard. It is quickly laser cutting. I am making a small house design that would be great to batch out for school groups to have everyone paint them in a different way. But just once again showing what a laser is capable of. And this file here is so big that I had to use two different pieces of cardboard. I will load the other one in. But you don't have to cut out cardboard houses like I'm doing here. This would also be a great way to make stencils for spray painting or airbrush purposes as well. If you guys like what you're seeing, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to my channel and also follow me across all my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. I'd really appreciate the support. But as you can see, it's cutting out the tabs for the house to be assembled and I will assemble that off camera and show it to you guys at the end of the video. And all the projects I'm doing in today's video does not take long at all. This is a very powerful machine and it's also very, very quiet while it's running. So not a lot of noise. But now that the house is done, we will do one final piece and this is going to be a custom Christmas ornament. And once again, it's going to have my logo on it. But this is the one thing that I make the most of over on the laser engraver. Ornaments are so versatile and you can make them in several different ways for small businesses around your local town or even make them for the Christmas season with your logo on it. And what I love about the laser engraver is I can set it up to run and work on the scroll saw and make scroll saw projects while the laser is batching out projects as well. Of course, a laser is something you never leave running unattended. But as you can see, my logo once again forming there on the material. But after it is done, 
we will close the video and i'll show you guys an in-depth look of all the projects we made in today's video And that, my friends, is the brand new MechPal 22 Watt Diode Laser Engraver. I want to once again thank MechPal for trusting me with this review. And hopefully in today's video, it has inspired you guys to look into laser engravers for yourselves. I would highly, highly recommend this laser that we have tested in today's video because it comes basically fully assembled. I know a lot of lasers don't, and that can be very tedious and off-putting to people to have to assemble all those small parts and everything. As you guys seen in today's video in the time-lapse portion, this laser was pretty much fully assembled right out of the box. That's why the box was so big and bulky. Only thing I had to do once I took it out of the box was screw in the four feet, connect the air assist, and then hook up the laser module to the wire. And we were ready to connect to Lightburn and start making projects. And that only took me around five or six minutes. So you were able to get rocking and rolling pretty much as soon as you take it out of the box. The only thing I had to add to get started today after connecting to Lightburn was the Honeycomb spool board to do the laser test files that I will show you momentarily. One thing I want you guys to know that during the whole time the laser was running, I was wearing my safety UV goggles to protect my eyes from the laser light. I also had the air filtration unit running and the door was open and all of the fans were running out here in the workshop to circulate that air and push it out of the shop. A laser puts off a ton of fumes that can sometimes be toxic to your health so of course and ultimately this laser is going to end up living in an enclosure so please keep that in mind i just felt with the nature of the review of this machine it was best to see it working out in the open but again it is going to go into an enclosure so please keep that in mind once again for all the files i'm about to show you i use the lightburn software i also highly encourage lightburn software it's very powerful to anyone who picks up and uses a laser engraver there is a slight learning curve with lightburn but with a little bit of time and effort you can start knocking out projects quickly i had my buddy sam show me how to use it and i was soon off to the races knocking out projects but the first thing we done is the first thing i always do when i get a new laser out in the workshop and that was do a test file this is something i again quickly designed in lightburn and this is the standard one quarter inch material i like to use and it's just essentially a material test to see what the laser is capable of right out of the box it says mechpal 22 watt at the top and then it says material test one pass two pass or three passes indicating how many times it has to go around to cut something out speed of 300 and power of 87 percent and you can see it cleanly cut everything out on two and three passes and it all but cut everything out with one pass it was just a little sliver holding on there and that is because i had this laser at 87 percent you never want to run a diode laser at a full 100 percent power all the time it can be very damaging to the laser module itself so please keep that in mind but after this initial test i bumped up the laser cut power to around 92 percent and everything else cut out nice and crisp and smoothly over on the laser but then we done our very first full project and it was a cell phone stand again out of quarter inch material and it took the laser around 15 minutes to do this from start to finish it not only engraved my logo but then it cut everything out and it is in two pieces to slot together i have a couple of these floating around one is back on the workbench and one is at my computer to where i can keep an eye on my cell phone while i'm editing videos for you guys and you can see it has a slot there for the cell phone charger to go into where it can be charging while it's sitting on the stand and these are totally customizable i just used my logo here but you can of course drag and drop any company logo a quote a poem some inspirational stuff anything you want on here and make these totally customizable and one of a kind and they make great gifts and especially stocking stuffers during the Christmas season and I know pretty much everyone has a cell phone and is in need of a cell phone stand but then we done a slate drink coaster these are also very popular and very profitable people make a lot of money making custom slate coasters and this is one I just done my logo on and again these are totally customizable you can put any logo business logo poem song lyrics anything on here and it took the laser around eight minutes to knock this one out people usually 
usually, excuse me, sell these in sets of four and they even go the extra mile and make a little cradle for them to set in or they will put a nice decorative ribbon around four of them, you know, just to add to the appearance when they are trying to sell them. And then I've done something totally unique. I cut up the box the actual laser came in and made a cardboard house. It took around 10 minutes to cut out all the pieces. The file is so big it had to go in two different passes as you've seen in the time lapse portion, but it slotted together perfectly and is held together with just dabs of hot glue. But I see this as a great way to upcycle and with the holiday seasons come up, you could make a bunch of these and make a Halloween or Christmas village. You know, you could paint these up as like a church. You could add a steeple to it. You could do a haunted house. You could do Santa's house. You could do a post office and have a whole little village made out of cardboard. So a great way to upcycle and use the ever accumulating cardboard pile that comes from orders like Amazon and everything. I know everyone has some cardboard floating around in some way, shape, or form. But then also the laser could cut out cardboard for stencils, for painting and everything. You know, you could cut out big stencils and use them for spray painting or airbrush purposes. So I always try to think outside of the box when it comes to what a laser is capable of. And then we done a custom ornament. And this right here is the one thing that I do the most of over on a laser engraver. I make custom ornaments for a ton of people and local businesses. Local businesses that might not be able to afford making shirts hats, you know, um, banners, stickers, or things like that. I love to work with them and make them a ton of custom ornaments. And again, they are totally customizable. Again, with just my logo here and a hoop to hang it from, I can put any business logo in the file, put words around it, you know, especially if they have a company motto. I can put the city name there. I could put like at the top, I could have put Merry Christmas from Artisan Pirate, Happy Halloween from Artisan Pirate. So again, these are what I do the most of over on a laser engraver, and it's always great for the laser to run while I'm over at the scroll saw working on it, also working on custom orders. But please keep in mind, a laser engraver is never something that you leave unattended. You always need to be close to it to where you can keep an eye on it, and I never leave it running unattended, any of my lasers. But again, it took around 10 minutes to do this custom ornament, and you have the option to do multiples if your laser bed is big enough, so great projects to make especially around the holiday time. But that's about all for this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review and I hope it really encourages you guys to go look at this laser. What I'm gonna do is leave links down in the description box below to MechPal to where you can go and see all of the amazing products they offer. It would be a highly recommended piece of laser kit for me, especially if you are just getting into laser engraving. I feel that 20 to 22 watt range is the perfect for you to try all sorts of projects. You can cut leather, you can cut vinyl decals, you can engrave on glass, you can engrave on stainless steel. So please keep that in mind what all else this laser is going to be capable of in the future. But that's about all for this one. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you'll click that subscribe button and follow me across all my social media feeds under the Artisan Pirate name. As always, links to contact me as well as all my social medias will always be linked down in the description box below these videos. That's about all for this one. And remember guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.